everyone. Welcome back to the GRE How To Series where we make studying for the GRE a whole lot more tolerable. Today we're going to go over the five key things you need to do to ensure your success on the analytical writing portion. All right, hi. We're back in the normal setting. It's gonna be a, a great ride. Um, today uh, is a video that comes from one of our viewers. Thank you so much for kicking off this series. I think we're gonna end up doing three videos on how to do well on the analytical writing portion. This is definitely an overlooked section for some people, but it's, it's not something to sleep on. Just because the score for the analytical writing portion isn't included into your 300 whatever score doesn't mean that it's not important. In fact, it could actually be something that could break a situation rather than make a situation. For example, if you have this wonderful application, no matter what school you go to, and it's well written, it's awesome, but you end up getting a zero on your analytical writing portion, people might start to wonder if you actually really wrote your application or if you had a lot, a lot of help. So it's always great to just put your best foot forward throughout the entire exam and I'm going to show you how you can do so. For those of you who don't know, there are going to be two essays on the GRE and they're 30 minutes each. One of them is analyze an issue and the other is analyze an argument. So this is going to be a multi-video series when it comes to doing well on the analytical writing portions because we're going to dive deeply into the issue essay and the argument essay separately. So stay tuned for more videos on that. So I'm gonna jump into five key things you can do to make sure that you get a great score on the analytical writing. All right, so number five on the list is to make it easier for your graders. The fact of the matter is you have real people grading your essays and you want to make sure that you are making sure that they're using their time evaluating the best of what you have to offer rather than trying to decipher what you mean by X or Y. And the way you can make sure that you're optimizing the time that they're using to grade your papers is to number one, be mindful of your spelling and number two, be mindful of your grammar structure. This is, a, you know, this is an opportunity to get evaluated, but it's not the time to kind of show off in a way that you can't back it up. So my advice for you is if you want to use a big word, great. It's actually great to show your vocabulary, but only use words that you can spell correctly. No need to go and say the, the antiphony or and whatever word that I can't think of right now um, because it's just like, it's not worth it. Number four is make sure you are writing clearly to guide the reader throughout your entire essay. I used to be a really disorganized writer and my dad was a language arts teacher and he would always kind of get whiplash trying to figure out what I mean by what I'm writing. And what he told me that really helped me was that you can kind of think of writing like driving in order to really be successful on the road, you need to signal which way you're gonna go so that you don't confuse the other drivers around you. You need to mind the stop signs. Having that kind of thought process while you are writing is actually really important. You are trying to let the reader know the path that you are about to go on. So maybe something that you would write in the opening paragraph sounds a little bit like, X is the right way to go because of three reasons. What comes after that are your three paragraphs describing those reasons. And a way to do a really great signal to let the reader know which one is which is a simple, simple word, really. First, second, third, or finally to actually signal that you are at three of three stops. Those tiny, tiny little words make a big difference on how organized your essay is perceived to be. So definitely start internalizing some transition words, some things that are really great signals to let people know where are you going because organization is a critical piece in this. 
The next tip is to aim for 500 words. I hate to be the hard and fast person that says, oh, it must be this amount of words, but it's undeniable that length actually does matter in these standardized tests and you really can't hope to do well if you just submit two paragraphs and say there, I answered your question. So aim for the 500 word mark, but don't fill all of it with fluff. I mean, it's it's just such a big balance to, you know, make sure that you are, are hitting the right chord. Um, I really don't want you to really fill things with nonsense because that could actually hurt you more than it could help you. And the next one is just, just try not to repeat words. And there's only one exception to that. Uh, and that exception is if you have to use the keywords for the argument, you want to use those a lot when necessary. So if it's not like a key word that you are writing about, you want to make sure that you try to limit them as much as possible. This is an opportunity to flex your vocabulary muscles, try some different transition points. All of those are, are things that are going to boost the perception of your essay. So in general, don't repeat words too much unless they are the keywords of the subject matter. And lastly, the number one thing that you must do to ensure your success in the analytical writing portion is to leave a minute to proofread. There is no spell check on this interface, so it's really up to you to read over it, make sure it seems the most organized, and make sure that you're not misspelling simple words like the or even other words that you decide to use within your essay. It's just a great way to spend your last minute to make sure that it is ready to send off to those ETS graders and they give you that six that you deserve. That's all we have for today. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up and please keep on sending suggestions on the kinds of videos that you want to see. If you haven't subscribed yet, this is a great time. It's summer, it's a wonderful day. Let's go for it. I'll see you next time.